This is Antarctica. No, no, not that Antarctica. This is Antarctica. And I will be spending the next 100 days here living amongst the penguins and whatever lies beyond. Day 1 and even before I spawned in, I made my first mistake. I chose to spawn at East Zone 1, which says it's easy, but I would quickly learn that it's not. What? Well, after managing to free myself from the little rock, I made my first pickaxe and then took out my anger on another rock. And also, I realized I was already cold in the easy zone, so I knew I needed to get some fur armor ASAP. Oh, and did I mention a large part of this map can drop down to negative 150 degrees Fahrenheit? That's colder than the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Well, it's nice knowing that I can die in around three seconds from standing in the wrong part of the map. But hey, at least you can gather some crops from some bushes. And also, some of these rocks look like normal rocks, but they give metal. It is what it is. I gather the small amount of resources and items when I came across a peaceful little lake area not too far from where I spawned so I decided to set up camp there and in my new area there was an unwanted guest I don't know what happened to him and after gathering all the hide I made a bow and some arrows took out some more random creatures and even got myself a set of hide armor and started cooking some food night was beginning to fall and everything was going good so yeah, it was officially cold enough for me to die already. So I just sat by my campfires for a little bit, which kept me alive, but it got boring in two seconds. So I distracted myself by actually farming some silica pearls in the little lake area next to my base because the water was actually warmer than the surface. And after that, I decided I would just suffer through some cold and try and farm out a forge and smithy to get into the metal stage as quickly as possible. But something else quickly caught my attention. There was a royal, there, there was, there was an aurora borealis in the sky. They weren't great looking because they weren't a finished feature to the map but they still looked pretty cool in my opinion and i finished off day one by killing a large cat inferior to my own cat chubby i started day two by crafting a new metal hatchet and crossbow i had also amassed quite a bit of cooked meat and obviously with a good supply of food i can venture more than three feet from my base now so i ventured further inland just to kill a large bug for chitin and to get attacked by a dire wolf Probably should have tamed that. But after killing that wolf, I went back to my base and crafted the Saddle Emporium Workbench. I thought it was a better saddle mod than my last video, but it wasn't. It had little to no custom dino saddles. And if there was a custom dino saddle for the creature, it was likely a useless creature. But even if I can't have a good looking saddle, I still need a dino. What? Well, that was some weird loot, but cool, I guess. But when I returned to my base, there was a level 30 tech parasaur waiting for me. So obviously he became mine because he didn't have a choice. But wait. So yeah, there's a parasaur saddle that lets items be half the weight. So obviously I wanted it and it wasn't that expensive. No, this is the worst timing. And you know what? I tried to spawn back in to get my body, but I died in exactly 28 seconds. So I just spent the rest of the day too on the respawn screen because I decided I would just wait till the warmer morning, then die 10 more times and accomplish nothing. Day three and I got back to my rotting core. Once I got my items re-equipped, I chose violent. I mean, it backfired horribly and I ran away, but it's fine. And when I returned to my base, I actually had enough resources to craft the parasaur saddle, and it turned out to be 60 pounds. And it's almost as heavy as my balls when I killed Zanny Zebra in the Ark 100 Days YouTuber Battle Royale. But never mind my beast-like PvP skills, as I could ride my tech Parasaur now. And I got straight to work with it, farming tons of narco berries for narcotics. And the saddle was actually really cool. It made it a lot more easier to farm, but I would never make another saddle in the Saddle Emporium workbench. Simply because there was no other creatures that I would actually tame just to have the saddle. So I just spent the rest of the day grinding out, farming materials and weapons like bolas, arrows, and even a long neck rifle and some bullets at the end of the day. I started out day 4 by grinding it out and even so much to 
point where I made a raft. In the southeastern or sort of habitable part of the map is the small archipelago, so a raft is going to be quite useful in getting around while I don't have a movement dino. And I sailed around for about 30 seconds when I discovered another frozen explorer that had some questionable loot. And then once again, I started to freeze. It was raining, so the midday temperature drop was understandable, but I still didn't enjoy it. But basically, as soon as I got back to my base, the rain cleared up and I set sail once again. This time traveling farther down the water towards the bottom of the map. And I made landfall once, but got scared of something in about two seconds, so I just hopped on my raft and sailed down the river a little bit more. But I was probably actually safer there, because when I made oh, landfall nah, for man. the second time, I instantly got bullied by a mantis. And with me being on my stubby little parasaur, I couldn't fight the oversized bug, which quickly forced me into a nearby river, resulting in me and my parasaur's demise. But it's alright, because I managed to get my items back, gather some nearby crystal for a spyglass, and knock out a level 95 dire wolf. And starting off the morning of day 5, I ended an innocent life, but hey, but hey, at least I had a newly tamed direwolf named Duck. Well, after going on a killing spree and then getting ejected from my wolf by a speedy flying chicken, I found a level 130 Thylacolio. And a good Thyla is super strong and very good for moving around quickly. Um. I thought it would fit. Now that I had that Thyla knocked out, I needed a saddle unlike my dire wolf, so I started my journey back to base to craft the saddle. As if- Aw, oh, you turd. Bruh. So I finished the day returning to my base all alone, crafting my Thyla saddle and riding out the freezing night next to my campfire. But Duck did not die in vain as I returned back to my Thyla on day 6 with the saddle. And there's one thing I especially love about the Thyla Colio. But now I actually have to get back to my base, but I decided to do some killing on my way back as I needed pelt fast so I can more easily survive the freezing nights. But when I actually returned to my base, there was a level 140 male Karno waiting for me, and since I could easily tame it, I mean, why not, right? Day 7, I named my Carno Midget Arms and went back out for more pelt. And that's what I did for pretty much the whole day. Fur takes a surprising amount of pelt, and dinos don't really drop a lot of it at a time. But it all did pay off in the end because I had a full set at the end of the day. And now that I had some fur, I was kind of tired of just being able to die in my own base area because of the freezing cold. So I decided it's time to move. I crafted a spare smithy, some forges, and an S plus crafting station. And if you're wondering what mods I've been playing with, they're all linked in the description. And after like two minutes of looking, I found a cool peninsula farther down the river that had moderate temperature so I decided, eh, why not build there? So I crafted some triangle foundations and got to work for the rest of the day as I decided on a mini hexagon base design. Not like my other ones that have way too much space that I would never use. Day 10, I finally realized I could speed up the building process quite a bit by taming an Argentavis, which have quite a lot of weight. And I named my new oversized pigeon Fighter Jet 284B. I don't know if that's a real thing or not. But now, subsequently, the only thing to do is fly around killing stuff and farming. With, of course, jet noises. Day 11, I decided to use triangle glass windows for my roof to really let in that natural light to make my base feel more homey and in touch with nature. More importantly, it looked cool. But it still let rain graphics fall in when it was raining, so it was always raining in my base even though I did have an actual roof. But never mind Ark and its glitches, I killed an alpha raptor for some levels on my RG and also ran into these weird mushroom looking boys that tranquilized me, but they did nothing. They did not add any torpor at all. But I would soon learn to hate these things because they last three minutes, make a lot of noise, take up room on your screen and they're everywhere on the map. But I did end day 11 on a good note when I knocked out a level 100 Dodicarus to help me more easily farm stone for my base as my hatchet was just not cutting it anymore. Day 12 was a day of mixed emotions since I quickly found, trapped, and knocked out a level 145 for Coptodon for easier berry farming. But it got sent to the afterlife in around 20 seconds later. 
But it was okay since I meant to tame my doe safely and then I made it a saddle and then some chunky stone farming. And you might be like, Grant, your pace isn't even that big. Why do you need so much stone? Cementing pace. That's why. It costs eight stone and four kite or keratin for just one. And you need five cementing pace for one triangle glass ceiling here. And not just that, triangle glass ceilings require 15 crystal as well. I mean, the crystal wasn't much of a problem, but I just like complaining. But by farming all this crystal by hand, made me come to the realization. I need an Ankylosaurus. I've got you in my sights. Uh. Day 13 started off well when my new ankle attained and I did some fat farm. But while I was at my base, I noticed that a tech strider kept meandering around and trying to get into my base. I'll have to take care of him later on, but for now, I'm setting up a decent crafting station with things like an S plus smithy or an S plus fabricator. But most importantly, I crafted the upgrade station. The smithy like looking boy is my only hope of really doing anything in these 100 days outside of the southeastern area. And if you don't know why that is, allow me to educate you. You put an item in that you have crafted, and then add some more resources that were used to craft that item, and voila, it's stronger than it was before. But every time you do this, it gets way more expensive. So as you can probably guess, I will soon be mass murdering wild Uteranus because they give the most pelt so I can keep upgrading my fur and go deeper into the snow. The next day I was out farming metal even before the sun was up, but that didn't stop from scorpions from bullying me. But the reason I was farming so much metal was in the hopes of getting the holy yes, industrial sir, forge yes, soon. It would just make life a lot easier. But after getting the metal into my forges, I had to farm a little bit of extra wood to keep them burning, and I also added two ramps into my base. Nice. But after that, oh. I crafted the S plus multi light, and I'm gonna keep it real with you. I didn't really know how this thing worked for a while. I didn't know this at the time, but the light actually turns off during the day because there's enough light in the base already. But with my little peanut ape brain, I kept trying to turn it on during the day, even though there was enough light for me to see. Never mind my future beef with that little light, as I crafted a generator, fridge, and air conditioners for a future hatching area. And oh, remember my need for pelt? Yeah, I went out on my thylo looking for things to drop pelt to kill, but I didn't find it. But I did kill that text rider walking around my base. Why was it so loud? Day 15, I started off the day right with some pelt I scraped together and upgraded my fur chest piece. That one upgrade was gonna do next to nothing in my defense against the cold, so I was gonna need to upgrade my whole set of fur multiple times. But moving on, I went back to building on my base by adding a small hatching area right outside. And after that, I discovered that you can adjust the settings of the Omni Light, but make sure to not put it at full 100%. And I end the day off by crafting a dinosaur gate trap. Day 16, I quickly put the trap into use when I discovered a level 145 griffin. It's Juan. I spent the rest of the day flying around and leveling up Juan. And if you didn't know, you can easily kill enemies by diving and swiping because it does the most damage and it's way quicker than dive bombing them. The next day was mostly grinding or base work. Whether that was farming wood to keep the forges ablaze, making a new fridge, industrial grill, or farming the necessary amount of oil for the industrial forge. But I still needed cementing paste for the forge. So I ventured into the redwoods where I believed beavers would spawn. Turns out they did, but they all spawned right in front of my eyes, so I'd have to wait a while for their dams to spawn in. But when I returned to my base, there was an rage trike waiting for me I started off day 18 by finally crafting the industrial forage and the rest of the day really was not that interesting as I just started to build onto my base to close in the giant industrial forge and I started farming more crystal and day 19 wasn't that notable either I just finished up the industrial forge area in my base by putting triangle ceilings on the roof and then I set my sights on a chemistry bench another necessity I would have to get if I wanted to keep progressing so I crafted more cementing paste electronics and then took some revenge on mantises for their poly and for what they did to me and my parasaur and day 19 ended me with killing more UDs for pelt and that's gonna be a constant the theme in this video. It's cold here. Well, no I added these railings to try and add some depth to my base, and I really like it. And also, I had to make sure everyone knows that it's my base. And it's kind of sad that this 5 second banner painting has a striking resemblance to my channel banner. But for the rest of day 20, I found a level 140 male rex and a high level aloe. So obviously, I tamed both, but as soon as they woke up, they were spawn killed by a cracked megatherium. You know what else can help you make you insanely strong like that megatherium? Sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. And since season 
ingredients are delivered straight to your doorstep, you don't have to waste hours of your life every week running around the grocery store comparing what's best. Meals are also delicious. Why would you eat just bland food when there is Hello Fresh? And you might be asking, but Grant, if it's delicious, it's probably not very healthy. Well, you're wrong because every single recipe from Hello Fresh includes fresh produce sourced directly from farmers. Hello Fresh has even sent me three free meals and they were all immaculate. And out of the crispy jack chicken, white cheddar wonder burgers, or the pork meatloaf parm I received, the pork meatloaf parm was by far my favorite. I highly recommend it. So go to HelloFresh.com and use the code GRANTY16 in all caps for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. So once again, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code GRANTY16 in all caps for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Or simply use the link in my description and don't forget to use code GRANTY16 in all caps. Day 21 started out in the redwoods again, gathering more cementing paste when I came across a sort of crystal cave. So me being an extremely intelligent individual I was, I raced back to my base, crafted caving gear, and got my thyla and came straight back to see that this cave isn't even finished. You can't go in it. Huh? But I was still bored of grinding and wanted an adventure, so obviously I chose the snow, otherwise known as instant death. There was still much of the day left, and I just happened to find a level 145 female Rex. Day 22, I was back in the snow already on the southern outskirts of the map. I was killing Yudis for their pelt when I saw a level 150 Basilo. You simply cannot pass this opportunity up to tame it since they're basically underwater tanks. But first, I had to take out the Mantos. And after taming that level 150 Basilo, I was trying to make my way back to my base when I came across another high level Basilo that would make a great breeding pair. But finally, I finished day 22 with upgrading my first chess piece to the Mastercraft tier, still not nearly good enough to fly further into the snow. And obviously, with water dinos, you need to place them in water to keep them. Luckily, I lived next to a river and spent all of day 23 and 24 building the stone walls section off the part of the river to keep my Basilo safe. But looking back on it now, these walls were completely useless and unnecessary. And that was a pretty big waste of two days. And day 25 was supposed to be another adventure-filled day. I thought I found another actual cave to explore, but it turned out just to be an underpass through a mountain to the snow. So I I spent the majority of the day out in the snow farming pelt, but I did find an overpowered Therizino saddle and a red drop. Day 26, I did not farm any pelt at all. But after farming a little bit of pelt, I knocked out and tamed a Procoptodon. I named it Flopper, and I really needed a good berry farmer for narcotics and medical brews, so this would be just great. And for the medical brews, I still needed an industrial cooker, or a cooking pot, but that's pretty lame. But for the rest of the day, I just started breeding my Basilos and making scuba gear, because I wanted to go underwater. The next day, my baby Basilo was born and I named him Haunch. I don't know where I got that name from, don't ask. But since I couldn't really leave my base area because I had to imprint my Basilo every 8 minutes, I decided to just take the day off of adventure and grinding and watch my baby grow and watch YouTube IRL. Day 28, my Basilo Haunch was fully grown and oh boy was he a beast. He would gain around 3k health per level, so I was basically riding an underwater tank. And my little ocean adventure wasn't that interesting. I literally just killed a few underwater nuggets and then mined some oil I needed. And the rest of the day was spent flying. I was still flying around in the snow on day 29 but i discovered a giant pyramid with the only obelisk on the map hovering above it there were five terminals inside that turned out to be where you summon the bosses that's pretty cool if you ask me but the reason i was flying around so much was one i needed another wreck and two i wanted to go exploring and see my surroundings but i guess i was productive at the end of the day metal farm well, day 30 started off violent, but I then spent the majority of the day searching. Searching for what, you may ask? That. Well, after getting jumped by Microraptor. Oh, no, 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 fam. Not like this. Not like this. My Rex tamed, and of course, it was a complete garbage like my luck with all tames. But moving away from dinosaurs, I set my sights back on a chemistry bench, but I still needed polymer to craft it. And there was no mantises close on my base at the time, so I ventured very far into the snow in search of penguins, but I didn't find a single one. I don't even think they spawn on this map, Antarctica. Do they even spawn in real life? 
penguins even real? So that led me to some aimless flying around the coldest part of the map, nearly dying to the freezing cold, but I got an overpowered Therizina battle. Blueprint. It was very expensive, but I could crush any boss if I had an army of theories armored with these saddles. Day 32, and I still didn't have enough polymer for the chemistry bench. So I decided to just bite the bullet and spend some time looking and farming for obsidian, which I can then turn into polymer with cementing paste. Yeah, I... I didn't find any. Bruh. So I decided to shift my focus once again, this time to the Therese, and I had a perfect idea in my head. I could get a good breeding pair of Therese, then they have good saddles from the blueprint I have, and then I can use my breeding pair of Rexes to breed tons of babies, and then have my Therese brutally murder them in cold blood when they take their first breath. I didn't even have to look for too long in day 33 before I found the level 145 Therizino. The tame took the majority of the day because I lowered my taming rates before these 100 days, and it looked like I did it a bit too much. <laughs> But when I did return to my base, I set my sights on the S plus hatchery. If you don't know how the S plus hatchery works, allow me to teach you once again. When dinos breed and drop a fertilized egg, the S plus hatchery automatically picks it up, incubates the egg to instantly hatch when thrown down, and has a twerking dodo on top of it. It's awesome, really. But to craft this twerking dodo monstrosity, you need 20 unfertilized dino eggs. And to get that many eggs quickly is to tame a bunch of female dodos and awkwardly sit behind them waiting for them to poop one out. And after taming dodos, I made another trap and set out to find the high level male fairy. And I was blessed by the art gods once again because I quickly found a level 135 male. And that tamed it. And now on day 35, I had my two good theories breeding. Dodos lined up, pooping out eggs once every five years. What it felt like. But life was good. And oh, I also killed a child. No, but really, one of my theories had way better stats than the other one, so I was trying to breed them to get the good stats on an opposite gender one, so I could just have two breeding with the good stats. Day 37, I had all the eggs I needed for the hatchery, so my dodos were now rendered useless, and I knew there was only one correct thing to do with them. There's no way, man. Well, I guess if the dodos survive a grenade, they deserve life. So anyways, I placed my S plus hatchery down just to realize I need re-fertilizer. If you don't know what that is, me neither. All I know that I need to craft it is I need fertilizer and a bunch of other junk. And the easiest way to get fertilizer is by pooping a lot. So anyways, I made the pooper, connected it to the water pipes at the five physics, and then <laughs> I devastated that toilet. But I did get more than enough fertilizer, so I activated the twerking dodo and did just some base bobbing for the rest of the day. Day 38, and while I was AFK, some dodos got massacred. But besides a few dead dodos, I finally hatched the theory I needed. So I spent some time raising the youngling before going out on Juan again, and while I was out, I spotted a level 140 UD I wanted to tame. But he kept bullying me with his fear war, so I left and went home defeated. On the morning of day 39, I was out on the far north of the map looking for a supposed frozen lake that had an artifact in it. But I didn't find it. Bruh. So what did I do instead? Baby raising. Day 40, I found myself out in the snow. More specifically, the wyvern den and rock drake den they're all connected for whatever reason i found a little hole in the wall where i managed to take down level 15 lightning wyvern who was just bothering me and that enabled me to fly around the den pretty freely no no no, no stop stop what are you doing i did however spot a level 170 rock drake egg but i have no way of getting it unless i wanted to get obliterated by the surrounding rock drakes so i ended up just flying home with some mantis organic polymer i'd farmed while in the den and making a chemistry bench but i instantly returned to the den on day 41 looking for more polymer which i quickly got and then returned to my base to make myself an industrial cooker i can now make as many medical brews as my heart desired and progress was going really good on other things as well i had a lot of theories growing and rexes were pumping out fertilized eggs that would soon be hatched and massacre. Day 42 and I realized I've been doing stuff on my base a little too much right now so I went back to the pyramid. But while there wasn't much to be discovered in the pyramid, I discovered a cave on the backside. What the? What? Oh, that's so many megalos. 
I'm getting 30 FPS in here. I'm in a 27 FPS. Yeah, after that whole ordeal, I just went back to my base and coped with the trauma by doing a metal run. And I don't want to hear a single one of you be like, Oh, Grant, that was cheating. You used creative mode. I don't care. I got teleported literally outside of the map. I was going to die and lose everything. Something I literally could not control. It was not legit. Day 43 was a grindy day. And when I say grindy, I mean it. I farmed metal, obsidian, more metal, and then tons of medical brews. I was farming all of these resources for primarily one reason, the boss. I was planning to only fight the Megapithecus as the map isn't fully completed and I don't really want to spawn in the artifacts to fight the Manticore which would then let me fight the Ice Titan if I defeat the other three bosses as well. So I just figured that Alpha Megapithecus would do as it is in the snow and it's snow map after all. But day 44 through 48, progress was made. Progress was made indeed. Day 49, I was really getting tired of grinding out, so I did the only logical thing to do. Risk my life in a cave. I would actually visit three caves on one measly day. The first cave was an underwater cave that was supposed to contain all the artifacts for the alpha dragon, but I decided to have two IQ and not look up where there was a tiny entrance, so basically I just left at the entrance. The second cave I visited was the frozen lake I was talking about earlier, and oh boy were there some terrors in that tiny frozen hell of a lake. What? But the third and final cave I'd visit today would by far be the hardest. It was an ice cave in the northwestern part of the map that contained all necessary artifacts from the Megapithecus boss. All I had was my thyla, a decent long neck with a few bullets, and a jerbo I forgot to show taming. Quality content. Nope. Day 50, I returned from the ice cave for reinforcements, but quickly got sidetracked when I decided to just grind out the Ascended Theory saddles. I wanted to take my army of theories into the cave for one, levels, and for two, they were super strong and they should be easily be capable of taking down any cave creatures. But making that many good theory saddles was gonna take a lot of hide. And after killing tons of dinos and not having near enough hide for just one Ascended Theory saddle, I got an idea. What if I just craft a bunch of permanent saddles, upgrade them in the upgrade station for way cheaper, and probably get around the same Arbor stats? Yes. Day 53, I picked up Chip, my Jerbo, and then flew off to the Wyvern and Drink Tench again. And this time, I didn't leave it empty-handed as I grabbed myself the level 170 Rock Drake Egg that was still there. I then flew back to my base, put in the S Plus Hatchery, and then I spent some time collecting resources and making cryopods. Because it was time to go back to that ice cave and retrieve my well-deserved artifacts. But as I was approaching the cave on day 54, I remembered about the Pelovias that lurked on the ground, and they were ready to pounce me off my team at a moment's notice. But you can get around them pretty easily by exploding them up and out of the ground. So obviously, I went back to my base, made a rocket launchers and some rockets before finally... Oh! <laughs> 
Day 55 was kind of an odd day. I just got back from a pretty tiresome cave adventure, so I decided to do some base work, aka killing baby Rexes for levels. But also, I hatched my baby Rock Drake and named it Lift, but not coolly. I named it with an I instead of a Y. Why am I even saying this? No, no one even cares. But day 56 is way more interesting as I did had to detain the U Tyrannus. I made a trap and found a level 140 that would be perfect for me to ride on the battle. But UDs are always a little hard to tame as they have that little tiny feature that makes them able to fear roar and you can't control your mouth for 20 seconds. No. Day 57, my UD tamed, and I went back to my base to spend some time standing. I guess I forgot to pause while I went and ate IRO. But that's okay, because I decided to take my basil out to a mysterious part of the underwater that I've been wanting to check out for days later on. It was called the volcano, and it was always super hot there. Duh. Day 58, I was still underwater, so I decided to check out the cave that supposedly has all the dragon artifacts again. Well, I found the actual entrance, but I only found two artifacts in it. There was a ton of coral, seaweed, and other junk that may have be causing me to not see the other artifacts. But for the rest of the day, executions. Day 59, I decided to really take my base to the next level and construct a nice area where I would store my theory. It was going to be just a simple row of foundations with a roof overhead, but I almost never finished my bases in my 100 days playthrough, which I really wanted to finish my base this time. But is it kind of useless? Yes. But I don't really care. So I spent the rest of the day grinding out and placing foundations. What the? They stunned? Dude, oh, what are you? No! Well, now that I have lost my only Archie and Doed, I have to go tame one of each again. So after repairing some of my fur armor, I flew out on my Griffin and knocked out a level 130 and 135 female Archies. I don't really need two, but I guess if I tame a high level male, I can then get a good baby Archie and something like what just happened will never happen again. So I looked for a good male for the rest of the day, but didn't find any. So I just returned to my base with the two females I tamed. Day 61, I spent another 30 minutes flying around looking for a high level male, and it only took me having to fly to the other side of the map, but I found one. I then tamed it and then flew home. Yes, very eventful day. Day 62, I bred my Argies and quickly hatched the egg I got from them. Chick grew up fully around halfway through the day, and so I turned him into a beast at the sacrifice of unwilling dino babies. But now that I had the RG out of the way, I had to tame the doe if I wanted to keep working on my base, of course. So that's exactly what I did. I went out and found a level 130 doe <laughs> Now that I had my doed, I got back to work on the standing platform area. I don't really know what to call it, to be honest. But I spent all of day 63 and 64 working on the platform and lining up my dinos. I even added a wooden layer above the main theory storage area for my rexes, as there was just a cluster of them around my base, and it was starting to really annoy me. But honestly, I think it looks pretty cool. I'll probably start adding an element of this in some of my bases of the future. Day 65 was another interesting day. Oh! Oh, that's not good. That's, re that's really not good. No, but before we get to that, I went exploring once again out in the snow and came across a large hole. So yeah, obviously knowing nothing about it, I decided to dive right in. It seemed to be some aberration underground section of the map that had four what paths this, trailing man? off from the entrance. But I could still use my griffin, so I thought, why not keep going? Oh! Oh, that's not good. That's, re that's really not good. 
But that, that was a teleport spot. That's not... So, yeah, that made it on my list of top 10 worst choices ever made by me. So, I did have to cheat to get out once again. I'm sorry, I'm not dying under the map where it's legit not possible to survive. But when I did surface again, I returned to my base, grabbed my Thyla, and went straight back to the Aberration teleporting hole of death because I can't seem to learn my lesson. Delaney is in here. Sweet. And like, oh my god. Nope, come out. Deuces. Well, that caving trip was actually quite successful. Even though I got scared out of the cave by Reapers, I got the 10 Megaladian Toxin I needed as a tribute for the Alpha Megapithecus fight. So I returned to my base quickly just to once again level up my rock tricks by killing baby Rexes. And then I went straight back to the Aberration Cave. After another, I guess, successful cave exploration trip, I decided to leave once again, but this time I just couldn't fly up because I was not on my griffin, so I had to climb the disappearing wall out. Nice. Bruh. Yeah, so when I made it back to my base, I kind of just stood there and didn't really do much for the rest of the day. Day 68, I finally started to start getting tributes I needed for the boss. And one of them just happened to be 10 Thyla Claws. So for a little part of the day, I had the joyous experience of flying around the redwoods, being in fear for my life of getting pounced off a tree by a Thyla at any given moment. But at the end of the day, I was back in the Wyvern and Drake Trench, and I actually found an artifact in there. I mean, I didn't really need the artifact, but it was cool, I guess. On day 69, I was out tribute hunting in the ocean. This time I was in search of megalodon teeth but an alpha two so caught my eye instead i then spent exact four minutes and 56 seconds spamming left click to killing the oversight squid but i forgot that give you black pearls when you kill them and these black pearls were actually going to be quite useful for what i had planned with my base but after returning and dropping the loot i got from the alpha kill i went back out and collected the remaining megalodon teeth i needed i was seeing on the tribute grind on day 70 with this time being 10 spino sales i needed spinos were much more rare than megalodon so i only found a few in the morning and spent the rest of the day in search of the spiny boys but to no avail day 70 one was also spent search of spinos but this time i was on my rock drake lift i went everywhere looking for these spiny dudes i even ventured into the aberration area and the weird cave behind the pyramid and even to the middle of the snow and all i found there was a corrupted chomp chomp huh? and you know what day 72 was also spent looking for these dudes i probably should have just done a dino wipe or something but that didn't really occur to me but day 72 wasn't all in vain because at the end of the day i found a cave <laughs> That's a blood stalker. And if you don't know what they do, they pull you off your tame and suck the life out of you. And I didn't feel comfortable charging in on my little Thyla against an army of those, so I went back to my base and grabbed a squadron of fairies. And boy, did it feel good tearing those blood stalkers apart. What? Day 74, I returned to my base and... Okay, so yeah, I was running out of stuff to do, okay? This isn't like Minecraft where you can't run out of stuff to do. Like, if you get bored of Minecraft, just go build a mob farm. That will literally blow up your PC if you leave it on for more than 27 seconds. So, I decided I would just farm hide for the next 11 days. Was this a good decision? No. I went crazy while doing this. Because it was over 6 hours of killing. 
dinosaurs. Wait. Wait, what is that? Day 87 was pretty uneventful as well. I was pretty tired from so much farming. Although I did go back underwater at the very end of the day. And that was fun. Oh, Lord. Day 88 and you want to know where I was at? Yeah, I was back at the underwater dragon cave. I didn't really need the artifacts, but for some reason it was really annoying me that I couldn't find them. And it wasn't that interesting, but I guess I did find another artifact that I hadn't seen before. The next day, I was starting to make final preparations. Going back to me never finishing my bases, I really wanted to finish the last pillar on my base. And I planned to put a replicator there when I hopefully kill the Alpha Megapithecus. So I spent the rest of the day farming obsidian and cementing paste for the over 600 polymer I needed for the replicator. Day 9 and progress was going good. I had the polymer crafting and the archives had blessed me because I found the last few spinos I needed. And at the end of the day, I cried up my theory army because it was almost time to fight the Megapithecus. In 91, I delivered my theories to the pyramid and got them all lined up for the boss. I then went straight back to my base and gathered the tributes for the fight. I don't really know why I didn't bring them with me in the first place, but I decided to go into the boss fight as soon as I got back. But I did have one worry. I didn't have Rex this time, but hopefully the good saddles make up for that. Put my fur chest piece away. Oh no, not more interesting. Wait. Oh my god. Gotta get out of the way. That's my one theory just getting boxed off the edge. Bro. Oh no. Well, day 92 and obviously I wasn't dead, which was quite surprising, honestly. But when I returned to my base, I placed the Alpha Megapithecus trophy front and center of my base, and it looked pretty cool, but now it's time to actually finish my base. I loaded up all the necessary resources for a replicator and put them into my three RGs, which actually took a while because of the super heavy resources. There was also a green drop coming down close to my base, so I flew over, unloaded all the resources just to realize I can't craft a replicator in there. I don't know why, it just wasn't there. So I had to get all the resources out and back to my base. Well, day 93, I figured out you could actually craft a replicator in the S plus crafting station, so that would have saved me a lot of trouble if I knew that before. But nevertheless, I crafted the tech replicator, and I forgot how big these things were. It took me a while to get it into a decent position, and I even had to get rid of my fridges and industrial grill. I then spent the rest of the day building the base around it. I was pretty happy that I finally finished the base as well. Day 94, I put my tech replicator to a little bit of use when I crafted a tech rifle and then took down a tech strider for fun. I also crafted tech golem, and you really don't get too many cool engrams from just the alpha megapithecus but besides that i bet all of you have a question on your mind grant why did you do the boss on day 91 and not 100 well you always hear those great stories about the great race to the south pole pretty much in the dead center of antarctica so i thought i would do something like that but instead of a race to put a flag in a cold place i decided to fight whatever lived in that cold place and oh boy was it a lot of dangerous stuff Oh, come on, guys. Let's not get stuck. Oh, no, no, no. This is not good. This is not good. Tag team, bro.
So cold, so dark. It's gonna lay down. <laughs> well, that was supposed to be me freezing to death, but it wasn't nearly as dramatic as I thought it would be.